your update on today's entertainment for the classic movie fan. See you in May. watch every couple of years. I love this film for many reasons. Every frame really is a piece of art. It's really storytelling done so well. <laughs> it's just a great movie. And essential. Beauty and the Beast, 1946. This movie is the epitome of a dreamlike experience for me. This film was one of my earliest forays into high art cinema. It's amazing that they were able to make this movie during the Nazi occupation of France. Jean Cocteau took something that was so very famous and yet made it all his own. Beauty and the Beast, Sean Cocteau. This is a movie he said he wanted to do a fairy tale without any fairies in it. And he's so beautifully succeeded. It's such a marvelous movie. What is, what's your particular impression of it? Well, this is a film that definitely since I think one of my earliest memories, this was to me uh, a foray into high art cinema, loving, you know, the classic storyline of Beauty and the Beast, thinking that it was elevated on a level I, I could never have imagined. Um, this was one of my first loves of great cinema. Yeah. I think this is just one of the most beautiful films ever made. I know, and wonderfully conceived, surrealistic, actually. Yes. I mean, many surrealistic touches in it. It's almost to me like, like having a dream not a real life experience but dreaming something when things get all kind of mixed up with reality and fantasy and everything like that well he really draws you into the micro rather than the macro so you know that long corridor right. which has become so famous of the human arms holding the candelabras in the um, beast castle in the beast castle those are the details or the human faces that are at the fireplace that right. watch them eat dinner and I love the cinematography and the aspect that instead of showing the expanses of the riches, it's really just this deep black that you can't see beyond. Right. So he gives you so much to work with in your own imagination, and it's just the most, you know, profound little touches throughout the movie that I think, you know, I'm I'm almost relieved that he didn't have a budget because right. it enabled him to be so much more creative. Right. Even the way he starts out with the opening credits. I mean, yes. he's writing them with himself. With Jean-Claude himself writing the credits. On yes, a chalkboard. Indeed. Yeah. There is such a whimsy there that's like, you know, not a lot of other films. Right. We have to say also this was made in France during the Nazi occupation of France. And so, you know, they had to be working with a very strict budget and... Uh, there were shutdowns, all kinds of things going on, and they forged through and made this incredible movie. And uh, I think it's really wonderful. I think uh, Jean Marais, who plays the Beast and also the Prince, yep. the double role, and uh, Josette Day, who plays Beauty, are really wonderful in their parts. They're f kind of from another world, both of them. And it's Jean Marais who plays a member of her close-knit family and right, team right. back in her home, and he is not a, really an appealing character right. and when he you know comes alive as the beast he's just so much more strikingly handsome yes. and looks so much more attractive but i think that's what i've always loved about beauty and the beast is i as a girl i always fell in love you know from the inside out to me it was you know you you meet handsome or attractive people from time to time, but it's really what's inside of someone that makes them more or less attractive. So for that, I've always loved Beauty and the Beast. Yes, let's see it. Here it is, one of the most beloved stories ever set to film from 1946, Beauty and the Beast.